Hey, hello all you crazy people out there. My name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games. Welcome back to Tower Defense. So, I said at the end of the last video that today I was going to finish off level design. I've decided that first I'm going to uh, I'm going to take care of a few miscellaneous items on this bug board. And then if there's time at the end, I will do a montage of level design. Otherwise, I'll just upload that independently later. Um, first things first. Uh, there's been some, in some cases, some oddness with the camera. And that includes things like uh, the camera probably should not be allowed to get quite as close to the edge of the um, of the levels as, as it is. Uh, if I were to go into, I think I pointed out on this, on the bug board, the, uh, which one was it? The canyon. Uh, you can kind of, kind of go off to the side a little bit and you can see outside the bounds of the level. And the options for me there are to create more more level geometry outside the bounds of the level, or I could just prevent the camera from going that far to the side anyway. Um, and also, uh, back. I should probably restrict the amounts back that the camera can go. Uh, maybe you could go a little bit front or back, but should not be allowed to go too far. Um, and then the same is true on this side. Uh, I did I did make a comment somewhere on here that the uh, the editor camera should be allowed to fly farther out than, than the in-game camera, but All right, we'll get there uh, soon enough. Let's see. Those are those are those are ants. So let's take care of that first. That will be, I believe, in the game's camera code. Uh, the easiest way to do this would be uh, if gameplay mode is not equal to title. If gameplay mode equals equals gameplay. Um, let's see. That is mouse dragon code. Uh, here, this is the two lines of code that constrains the. Uh, I believe it's here anyway. Yeah, these are the two sections of code that constrain the uh, the camera's X and Y position. So I can, let's see, instead of hard coding the left and right and top and bottom limits to, uh, to where the camera can be, let me, uh, let me, let me parameterize those instead of our camera X min. Uh, this can be, Let's see, game dot gameplay mode equals equals game modes dot gameplay uh, question mark. So this is just going to be a big old conditional operator. Um, if you're in gameplay mode, uh, let's make the let's make the limit something like. Oh, I don't know. I can I can fiddle around with these later, just until I find something that I like. Uh, let's make this sixty four of our camera x max is going to equal let's say actually i need i need uh an else there don't i so 64 or zero uh in this case room width uh minus 64 colon room width and on the x axis if the x is greater than or equal to camera x min and x is less than camera x max then then we'll be allowed to move this should give us different bounds for the camera in um in different modes okay and as assuming this works the way that i want it to we can uh we can play with the uh the y-axis later so i am i'm cutting off a little bit sooner than I was earlier. So maybe the tolerance should be something more like 200 or so. Um, let's say the the tolerance in either side of the room, the buffer as it were, is just going to be 200 rather than rather than 64. 64 is about, um, say, two towers worth, uh, two towers in width, because I believe they're, uh, that's much better. You can you can still see outside the bounds of the stage a little bit if you back up, but you are you will not be able to back up that far shortly. Okay, I think I think two hundred is reasonable. So uh, I will enable you to go forward and backwards a little bit, but it won't be it won't be dramatic. I think probably about here is like if I were to to go into edit mode, the the red line around the the side of the stage should be. And you can see that I can go farther up to the sides in edit mode than I can in, in, uh, in gameplay mode. Ooh, I am... Okay, I'm, I'm stuck because uh, when you go into edit mode and if you go too far, it 
it sort of freezes you. Let me let me go about this a different way. Um, let me say two. Oh god, how would it be? Uh, two dot x is going to be clamp two dot x plus mx. Uh, lower bound of camera x min, upper bound of camera x max. Uh, that will be the same for from dot x because there is no camera rotation and. Let's see, if I were to comment out all of this, I shouldn't have the problem of getting stuck after going into edit mode. Right then, so I, I'm in the canyon again. I can go this far to the left. If I were to go into edit mode, I could go this far to the left. And if I were to go back into gameplay mode, I just I snap back into the middle of the playing field. Excellent. And same thing on this side. All right, I like that. So, uh, camera... Camera Y min, camera Y max. This will be... Uh, this will be a similar deal. Camera X, uh, camera Y min rather. This is always going to be zero because that'll always be the uh, the forward as far as you're allowed to go forward. Um, actually, you know, I might keep it in the same form just in case for any reason there's reason to want to be able to move the camera like farther up in edit mode. But otherwise, it's going to be zero or zero. And camera Y max, this can be... In, um, in edit mode, this will be room height divided by two. Um, I think in... Honestly, in regular gameplay mode, it's probably going to be something more like 128, and that'll be it. So if I were to do the same thing for from.x, from.y, this cannot actually be exactly the same, because... Uh, oops, I just deleted a lot of code that I didn't want to delete. Uh, this can't be exactly the same, because... Uh, from dot x from dot y are not in the exact same place. Uh, for, uh, two dot y is somewhat in front of from dot y, but let's see what is the uh... oh god uh, from level is two hundred. Uh, from level is eight forty and. Two level is zero, so I need to. Eight forty is the um the distance between the camera's position and the the point where it's looking looking at. So, I'm going to have to go back into the camera code. I was here, wasn't I? And I just closed it. And uh, two dot x is that. That's fine. Actually, I can just say uh, from dot y is going to be two dot y plus eight forty. All right, and likewise, this is a magic number that you might parameterize somehow or make a variable, but given the rest of the code, if you want to do that for whatever reason, that should be simple enough. So let me go into the canyon, and I see we are we are already screwing something up. I can only move like side to side in one direction. Uh, from dot y is going to be two dot y plus eight four. Oh, I need to make this uh, y min and y max like that, and I need to add m y instead of MX. Okay. Let's try this again. I'm using the canyon as my test level. Okay, that's great. That will work. Uh, I can go about this far back. If I were to go into edit mode, then you could, that's basically the, uh, actually, that's almost, that was almost exactly the, like the end of the, the level stage boundary, this red line. Uh, if I were to if I were to go back here, go back into gameplay mode, I would be forced back. If I were to go, well, if I were to go, I can't go farther up in either case. But anyway, this looks good. This stage boundary looks good. If I were to go quit to title and then go to another level, uh, we should be fairly well off. It doesn't matter as much here that you can see beyond the uh, the stage boundary. By the way, I do want to eventually put more trees and stuff on these hills, maybe a little bit more sparse than they are uh, within the playing field. But I do want to eventually do it. And, um, again, backing up, that's as far as you can go. That's fine. Let's try some of the other levels. Uh, if I were to go to the farm, for example. Yeah. Okay. This looks approximately correct. Uh, some that may, that may get a little weird. Perhaps the, uh, the beach and the pirate cove, because there is so little here. Uh, in fact, if you looked at some of the other items on my bug board earlier, you may have noticed some other things that I would like to do. Um, with regards to particularly the beach and the pirate level. But that'll be uh, that'll be taken care of later. 
uh, let me take a look at, for example, the um, these bottom three. I'm gonna I'm gonna finish those soon. I have the uh, I've created using Kenny's Asset Forge some some like building shaped things that I want to use, and um, probably hopefully soon, hopefully by the end of today, I will uh, I will be playing with those. Anyway, this looks about about good. If I were to open up GitHub Desktop. And for whatever reason, I didn't already have this open. If I were to go to GitHub Desktop, where is Bombardier? Down here in the um, in the YouTube organization. Uh, restrict camera uh, bounds in gameplay mode. Okay. Next, I can I can drag both of these cards to the close list, can't I? Because I I kind of. These two, uh, these two little issues are, are both really related. Um, with regards to level design, I'd like to add a day-night toggle and a water on-off toggle to the um, to each of the levels. Uh, not all levels need like water. It's really only the water at the beach and the pirate cove levels that I'm really concerned about that with. Um, so let me take care of that one first. Uh, these two, these two tasks should be similar. Actually, you know what? It might actually be be easier to. Where is the render code? Um, okay, the skybox. This is the skybox. It is possibly a little overkill to even have a skybox and not to just like draw clear, but we'll work with it. Um, I can have uh, this skybox for day. And I can make another one if I go into graphical stuff, control D to duplicate this skybox night. And if I were to make this a little bit darker, maybe like a, a navy blue sort of sort of look, maybe something like this. Uh, something like for the graveyard level, perhaps. Uh, this video missed Halloween, didn't it? We can we can have a toggle that will use one of those or the other. Uh, I can close the camera code now. Let's see. Uh, let me just create a variable, and I'm going to attach this to. Where is where is stuff like the levels visual code stored? Like load map, yeah, that's great, but okay, so it's not really stored in any sort of persistent level struct, which it really should be. I don't know why I didn't do that. That's really bizarre. Usually that's like the first thing that I do when I when I create a game level or something representing game level data. Um, but anyway, it's just stored as the collection of variables with like uh, path nodes and environment entities and uh, the fuse. The fuse data is a struct, but I don't want to uh, jam more stuff into there. Um, let me create a couple variables. Let me call them... Um, God, what was it? Skybox type. Uh, this can be just zero. Actually, you know what I can do? Instead of just making the skybox day and night and whatever, I can just literally um, just have a single skybox, and I can just make this a, a different sub-image. Uh, so if I were to take some sort of some sort of darker blue, some sort of nightly blue, let's make it a little darker than that, maybe more like this. Uh, I can just have this as a different sub-image, and then uh, the skybox type can just refer to the sub image in there. Uh, okay. So here we are going to uh, self.skybox type. We are going to draw the particular sub image. This is going to be zero by default. If I were to run the game now, we would have exactly the same thing that we had before. I will just add a little button to the level editor mode, which allows you to toggle between or maybe cycle through in case uh, you want to have like an orange skybox for the, the desert levels or something like that, but we have the skybox being drawn. That's fine. If I were to go to save map, uh, I can inside the JSON, the save JSON can include a uh, skybox type like that. If I were to go to load map, uh, let's see, where's load map? That's probably, and I can get rid of this dead breakpoint, honestly. Uh, it's probably right under here, right? Yeah, so uh, path nodes being read out of the load JSON. Uh, I guess other additional things that I tack on at the end should go at the bottom, really. Well, you know what? Um, if variable struct 
exists. That's a function that we have access to now. Um, where is the uh, the load JSON? Load JSON, and the name is going to be skybox type. Um, else. All right, so if the variable exists in the save JSON, uh, skybox type is going to be, be set there. Else, uh, we can set it to, to zero as the default. And very, very soon, I will have something similar for, uh, for water. I just want to deal with the skybox first. Now, uh, in like if I load the game now, this should, this should just work exactly the same as before. We are just saving and loading the skybox type. We're just tacking another variable onto the JSON. Game works. Let's see, where is editor mode? Editor mode should be somewhere up here. Uh, I think I'll just have like one of the extra like function keys or something like F10 or something like that. I'll just attach that to um, uh, like settings or something like that. And I'll just have a couple of miscellaneous settings going in there. I can collapse this entire region of gameplay stuff. Uh, editor. Let's see, I really should, the more, the more modes I add, the more I'd like to just have like a single editor mode and have an enum. So I think, let's see, variables belonging to skybox type, I'll commit this. GitHub, shouldn't take you that long to commit that. That wasn't that much data. And uh, let me, because today is just gonna be like, Really, this is going to be another maintenance day, isn't it? Uh, I'm going to just have editor mode is going to be equal to, and I'll make this an enum. Uh, let's call this enum editor modes. Uh, we can have uh, main. We can have, uh, let's say, path. We can have collision. Um, Terrain is another one, and settings. And settings is just gonna just gonna contain a couple toggles. Um, let's see. I can set editor mode is equal to editor modes dot main. That's what it was, right? Yeah. Okay. And I can just like search and destroy for all the all the other editor modes that I kind of just got rid of. Uh, editor path mode. We can just change this to editor mode is going to equal editor modes dot path. We can get rid of the terrain and collision toggles. Um, if you hit F7, this is going to go into collision mode. Uh, so I can say editor mode is going to be equal to editor modes dot collision like this. Um, See. Oh, you know what? This is also like this. Um, this whole thing happens when you uh, when you exit collision mode. So I should probably like save collision data or something like that. Let me make another method for that. Uh, this can be save collision data, or maybe I'll call it like finalize collision data is going to be function. Uh, no parameters, it's just going to do all of this. Um, correct the indentations. And then anytime you are, anytime you change collision modes, if Um, editor mode equals equals editor modes dot collision. Actually, I have a better idea. All right, this is where like actually engineering your software before you start typing code would come in handy. Uh, this can be instead of fuse collision data, this can be set editor mode. Uh, if the existing editor mode is equal to collision, we will finalize its collision data. Otherwise. Um, we won't do anything and we'll just set it to the new mode. All right. So 
uh, for example, over here, we can set editor mode, uh, editor modes dot, and I'll, I'll copy this so I can just keep it on my clipboard and type easily. Um, this is going to be path. Perhaps a selected entity set to undefined should go in there as well. I'll do that. That way, anytime you change editor modes, you will, uh, you will set the selected entity to something else, uh, to undefined rather, sorry. And, uh, F. Three is just fusing. F seven is collision mode. So I can I can simply take all this, collapse that collision. Um, F eight is going to be this is terrain mode. That's going to be toggling terrain mode. Okay. Like that. Um, is F1 used anywhere? I might use F1 to go back to the main, like, main editor mode. That might make sense. Um, editor path mode, this can be set to instead editor modes.path. Um, anywhere else? All right, down here I also need to editor mode equals equals editor modes.path. Anymore. I think this is the last one. It's close to the bottom of the file. Like that. All right, that's the last one of those. Uh, any others? Uh, collision mode. Am I using this? Else if. And this could be just like made into a switch statement instead of whatever it is now. Like that. Um, So there's another one right here. There's a there's a number of things that I wish. Uh, this is path, right? What one was this? Oh, this was terrain. Yeah. Um, when I initially started doing this series, I kind of deliberately decided to do this just completely off the cuff, figuring stuff out as I went. But I I don't think that has worked as well as it did in my head. Um, so I think uh, I, I have some thoughts about how that went. I will, as I've mentioned several times now, do a post-mortem at the end of this. What, what did I just delete? Uh, this is path mode. Right? Oh no, this is, uh, this is terrain. Um, I, I would estimate that if I like properly software engineered this whole thing. I probably could have been done. Um, I, I probably could have like cut out like five videos worth of work or so. Uh, maybe maybe more than that by the end. But let's see, let me just search for any other references to, okay, so editor terrain mode is another one here. So if I were to continue searching for and not all of the things that pop up in this as I'm cycling through here will be related to like terrain modes or whatever, but um, some of them will be. It looks like I'm done. Like editor model index is a bit of a false positive here. Okay. Pretty sure that's all of them. So if I were to run the game and um, move through the editor, um, things should, things should work as smoothly as before. I did cut out a lot and we are automatically fine. Where, where else in my code would that be? Um, in the camera. Okay, fine. Camera. This is the only one here. If game.editor mode is going to be equal, equal. Like that. Uh, way to make me eat my own words immediately. And for some reason, game maker spawned in front of the game window. Uh, let's see. Let's go to let's go to any old level. Let's go to uh, F F two to go into path mode. Okay. Um, oh, I did say that I would add F one to like. No, 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 no. What did you even? I did say I would add F1 to go to revert. Uh, 
Okay, so if keyboard check pressed uh, VKF1, uh, editor modes dot main, and I should probably put that in the UI as well. Oh, F1 is save. F1 has already been claimed by save. Um, F4 and F5 are for cycling models. F... I guess I'll, I'll mention that as well. F4 and F5. Like that. Uh, F6, F7, F8, F9. Let's say... Alright, F F9 will be... Go into map settings mode, and F10 will be... Uh, model mode, as I'll call it. Okay. So instead of putting that here, because F1 is already claimed by, by the save button, um, two, three, uh, five, four, five, six are elsewhere. Seven, eight, um, F9 will be main. No, F10 will be main. F9 will be settings. Okay, so this should work. We should be able to, to move through the editor modes. All right, that all looks good, right? Um, F2 is gonna put us in path mode. F10 will bring us back. F7 is collision painting mode. If I go from here to F2, we can, we're just allowed to do that. Um, and whatever changes have been made to the collision painting should all automatically be preserved. Um, this is terrain. If you wanna create yourself a mountain right in the middle of the level, feel free. Probably not a great idea for gameplay. Uh, and, um, F9, map settings mode currently doesn't do anything special. Okay. We have dedicated uh, map editing modes. Okay. Next, uh, I would like to have the UI behave accordingly. Let's see. Pause, game over, editor. Um... At this point, I really can just switch editor mode and put this in a massive case, a case editor path, such as this. And then case editor collision and so on and so forth. Uh, give me a minute. I'm just going to take a minute to format all this. You probably don't want to watch. Okay, so that if else tree has gone from, from the monstrosity that it used to be to a nice, slightly nicer uh, switch statement, uh, we can we can collapse these if we want. Actually, I, if I wanted to do that, I would have to throw it in a region, wouldn't I? Anyway, uh, editor modes, terrain, editor mode, path, editor, editor mode, collision. There are two more that I said, case, editor, actually settings is just the default case, modes dot, um, settings, I'll come back to that break. Uh, and then case editor modes dot main can be this one. Um, I do want, I think, uh, if we are, if we are going to be here, this like help text should just be shown regardless of, of the mode you're in. So I'm going to unindent that and put it outside the switch statement. And then that should cause that, that helpful directory guide thing to, um, uh, failed to compile something. Did I put like a colon where I needed a semicolon or something like that? I do not see any uh any syntax errors. This is not very helpful. Why are we? Am I not allowed to um to define static variables inside uh, switch? That's weird. I guess that was the problem because I just changed that to a regular local and it built fine. Um, let's see. Yeah, uh, the, the helpful text is still there. That's fine. Um, if I were to go into one of the other modes, this is so far unmarked settings mode. Um, I think I'll just add a couple hotkeys. 
uh, like, I don't know, JKL might toggle different settings, something like that. Let's see. First, let me put some... Actually, I'm going to do something similar. I'm going to go just draw some, some lines and, like, automatically... Uh, automatically align them like this. Uh, instead of being aligned to the right side of the window, we can align it to the left side of the window, and I can say, um, yeah, J can cycle the cycle the skybox. Maybe K can toggle water. K like that. Okay. Maybe I'll give it a header too. Maybe I'll I'll um. Yeah, I'll, I'll give it a header. I'm just gonna just say settings. Like that. Okay. So I've been recording for 37 minutes already. How did that happen? Anyway, that's good. So, made the UI in editor mode less trash. That's the best way I can think to describe what I just did. Um, let's see, back in the, uh, back in the actual editor update where the actual action happens, that should be in probably up here somewhere, right? Okay, so this could also be turned into a switch statement, but I think it's less offensive. Um, if... Oh, this needs to be else if. Uh, editor mode equals equals editor modes dot um dot settings. Uh, if keyboard check pressed uh, vkj. Oh no, ah, that's not a virtual key. Ord ordinal of capital J. Um. Let's see. I can just say to cycle the uh, cycle the skybox uh, self dot skybox type is going to equal um, plus plus self dot skybox type mod uh, sprite get number sprite get number is a function that gives you the number of uh, sprite frames of the number of sub images in a sprite. Uh, if you plus plus prefix increments the skybox type, that'll uh, increment it by one. That'll add one to it. And then modulo by the number of image frames in the skybox is going to, um, if you overflow by one, it'll wrap around to zero. That should be fine. Uh, we should be able to set the skybox type in the graveyard level and possibly other levels. And if I were to go into here, editor mode, settings, if I were to hit J, perfect, it's now nighttime. Um, kind of want to set like the ambient light color as well or at least darken the uh, darken the light that's that's shining in the sky but you know what that might impair visibility it wouldn't take long um it wouldn't take long to do that but i don't want to i don't think i want to impair visibility so maybe i won't do that okay anyway the graveyard looks definitely rather cool like this i can I can save this somewhere. Where is Bombardier data files maps? Uh, this can be, what is the graveyard level? I do not remember. This is important. I don't want to save over the wrong one. Hang on. Uh, the graveyard is number six. Okay. So let's see, Game Maker Studio 2, Bombardier. I really should clean out this Game Maker Projects folder one of these days. Uh, level six. Yes, please. Hopefully that'll save. Um, if I somehow corrupted the map data file, I can always just revert it in source control and fix whatever happened. But I don't think that's going to happen because it's just reading a little bit of JSON. If I were to go to graveyard, we are now we are now night. Okay. Any other maps which I think uh, would benefit from a nighttime a nighttime theme? Do we want like a desert at night? Also, by the way, since I didn't show this, if I were to hit the J key repeatedly, it will go back. Um, I did say something about making the, the desert have like an orange, an orange skybox. All right, maybe I'll do that. Um, let's see, skyboxes. 
and let's add another one and let's make it like a hazy sort of hazy sort of sundown all right i think this is quite fun um i saved that didn't i i did the other one was the buttes let me edit this skybox all right actually I feel like I'd like a different color, but I don't know what that color is, so maybe I'll just, I'll leave it for now. If you have a color that you prefer to see, uh, make a pull request. Um, let's see, another word, another... I've already forgotten what level index this is. Maybe I should have, instead of naming these level 1, 2, 3, I should have actually named them by their name. This is level 9. Alright, level 9. And... So any others that I'd really like to change? Maybe like the city at night or something like that. Like if I were to go into one terrain editor mode, that's not terrain. That's this is terrain. Um, one for dark green like this. Make make the city take place at night. Like that. All right, I think that might be that might be fun. Just to mix things up a little bit. That's level all, and I remember that one. All right, and um, just to make sure that they saved correctly, let me. Let me load these again. Um, city, yes, that's what I'm looking for. That's the one, and the other one was the buttes. All right. So let me. I'll commit the changes to the to the level files separately. I'll do that at the end. Um, implemented skybox uh, settings like that. All right, so I can I can move the the day night toggle to get the closed list uh, editor add a water on off toggle. That's going to be very very similar. I'm just going to have to actually implement water. I'm just going to make like a flat plane um, to represent water. So let's see. First, help. Where did I put it? Did I not initialize this anywhere? I totally didn't initialize this anywhere. All right, well, oh, I did initialize it. Why is it, why did it not show up when I searched? Anyway, um, let's say draw water or show water, because I don't want to, I don't want to start a variable with the word draw, because a lot of built-in game maker functions start with that. So let's say show water is going to equal false by default. Um, we can implement the controls for this before I implement actual water itself. This was k, uh, self dot show water equals the opposite of self dot show water. And the other place where this will be needed is if in the in the save and load um show water is going to equal self dot show water and when we come to load it back in um like this defaulting to false okay So this should implement the controls. Uh, I am actually going to do something dangerous and not commit this without testing it. And, and commit this without testing it, rather. Implemented uh, water controls. As I said, the, the way it's going to work is going to be very extremely similar to the way that the, uh, the skybox index works. It's just going to be a true false instead of a, an index. Uh, next, I actually need to draw this. That's going to be a little bit more involved. I'm going to, let's see, where is the terrain created? Actually, you know what? Yeah, I'm just gonna I'm gonna use good old model creator for game maker for this. I'm going to um let's see. Let me draw myself a nice a nice sheet of water, and it's gonna be like as big as model creator for game maker will allow me to make it actually no it's not i'm gonna make it
You know what? Change my mind. It's actually going to be simpler to do this by hand, I think. Uh, create ground buffer. I'm going to... Let's just do this again. And instead of, instead of creating ground buffer, we can create, like, water buffer. Create water buffer like this. Um, let's give it a helpful name. So the size can be the same as the um, the size can be the same as uh, the size of the ground, but it's not going to be segmented. It's just going to be two triangles. Um, let's see the tile size. Padding is padding is fine. Uh, we can basically take all of this out of the loop, and we can unindent that and change the name of the vertex buffer to. to water. And instead of i and j and i plus tile size and whatever, we're just going to say var x1 is going to be equal to negative padding, var y1 is going to equal negative padding, uh, var x2 is going to equal room si uh, room width, width plus padding, uh, var y2 is going to equal room height plus padding like that. Um, it's going to start at x1, y1, and then x2, y1. Like that, and then x2, y2, uh, x2, y2 again, um, x1, y2, and then x1, y1, back where we started. Uh, this is going to be the water vertex buffer. Uh, water is going to equal create water v buffer out of the format. That is used, right? It is, okay. And uh, when it comes to actually drawing the game world, um, at the end, because this is going to be actually, you know what? Yeah, this is going to be, uh, I forgot about that. I need to make the color blue. Um, and I do want to make the transparency like 50%. So the alpha is going to be even better. If our C is going to be uh, C underscore blue. That way, if I change my mind, I don't have to change it in six different places. If our A is going to be 0 0.5. Um, C, A, and that can just be copied across all of these vertices, like this. And I did, I'm still not actually drawing that anywhere. Where is, all right, vertex submit, ground. Um, after all of the towers and everything are rendered, I, I need to, since this is transparency and it's the only transparent thing in the game, I should render this last, um, say before all the other semi-transparent stuff. Uh, vertex submit self dot water uh, pr triangle list uh, the texture is going to be negative one and now if I go to for example the beach which is level seven I got to remember that if I try to save here and if I hit K to toggle water nothing happens. Why is nothing happening? Um, if I were to make a one, is that being is that being like discarded because it has enough of one? Also, it's not checking to see if water is actually enabled in the level. It should just be drawing it. Okay, that's being drawn. If I were to go to uh, the beach, it would no. Okay, I do want the water to be somewhat below the surface. All right, first, let's if self dot show water. Let's only do this if the water is, is enabled. Uh, next, uh, I'm going to say var z is going to be like negative 16 or something like that, something slightly below the ground. And I, I guess this could also be a setting. This could also be done with like a, a matrix transform or something, but really, I don't really care. Um, All right, let's try that. I'll fiddle with the color later. And then I also, uh, I, I want to have transparency without a discard. Let's see, editor 9K, now we have water. Okay, so 
That should be a little higher in reality. Maybe I'll make Z negative four or something instead. Um, it just needs to be below zero, really, because I don't want it to fight with the flat ground, which is also at Z equals zero. And once this is going, I'll commit, and then I'll deal with transparency. F9. Oh, uh, no, I did not enter the level yet. That's the campsite. F9. No, tab. F9. K. All right, so the water is not is not appearing even even when it's enabled because the uh, this map does not have any land below that level. Uh, if I were to go to one that does, such as the beach, there we go. Okay, and it actually looks like the boat is in the water. I still could probably stand to make it a little bit higher, but you know what? It's close enough. All right. Um, I might when I'm going back to touch up levels, I might make like the sand dunes a little bit higher. Uh, so that I, it looks a little bit less like the world is just disappearing past that boundary, but it's still a lot better than it used to be before. Um, all right, let's see. Let's commit this. Uh, draw water if draw water if you're supposed to. Uh, let's see. Let's make the alpha, as I said earlier, zero point five. I might make the color some lighter shade of blue, uh, something closer to like the skybox blue. But first, let me. All right, so yeah, anything with an alpha below one is being discarded by the default shader. I'm going to just create myself a new, basically a pass-through shader. Um, that, like, doesn't do anything. Uh, shader. I'll call it, like, shader water or something. Throw that in the graphical stuff. Shaders folder. Uh, there's quite a few shaders here, aren't there? And, uh, with this in mind, I should probably, you know, I should probably, uh, move this down below anything else that needs the chicken shaders. Like that. Uh, you could shade a reset after this, but it's immediately gonna be reset anyway, so it doesn't really matter. Oh, and also... I should uh, reset the world matrix before I draw that. Okay, so SHD underscore water is, is more or less going to just be a pass-through vertex shader. We have position, normal, and color. Don't care about any of this. I don't need any of any of the variants that are not V underscore color. Uh, do not need anything relating to lighting or fog. Actually, I might keep I might keep fog. Yeah, let's keep fog. Uh, common light evaluate, common light, common fog evaluate. That all can stay. Um, oh, is fog actually like being used? Oh, it is down here. Get rid of all of that. And then in the fragment shader, uh, alpha test, alpha test ref, nobody cares about any of that. Fog strength, fog start, fog end. Actually, you know what? I'm not even using this any, no. I'm not using fog, am I? No need to bother with that. No need to, to waste time setting up fog. Okay. Not only to make the water a little bit cheaper to draw, but also just like, um, Make the code a little bit faster to write. Okay, so the water should draw with 50% transparency here. Um, not mean to delete that. Anyway, the water should be drawn with 50% transparency. I have been recording for about an hour. Um, I've cleaned up all of the things in the level design board. I would like to, to take care of some of the other things and some of the other um, to-do lists. Let's see if I toggle water. It is still not drawn. Why is water not drawn? Alpha is, alpha is 50%. Oh, um... Boy, what is this? GL underscore position. G 
GL position needs to be set. I did not even know that the shader compiler would let you compile your shader if you didn't have that, but I guess it does. All right, that's cool. The beach, come on. Let's do this. Still nothing. Why is nothing being drawn? Uh, matrix world, homogeneous coordinate of one, vertex position, in, input position rather. Uh, normal is not used anywhere. What am I messing up? You know, this is still wrong, isn't it? Matrix, matrix world view projection. Everything else could be fine for all I know, but if the, uh, if the vertices are not, are not ending up in, in normalized device coordinates or whatever, then I'm not going to see anything. There we go. Okay. I would like this to be lighter because this looks purple when blended with the sand. But it is working, indeed. Uh, if you wanted to get fancy, you could add like little waves or something like that. I'm not going to add my fancy water ripple effects here. Um, let's try something else. Try C aqua, like that. Maybe that's closer to the sky color. Or you know what I could do? I could um. This, this might be very interesting, indeed. Uh, I could quit the title. Go to the go to the beach. All right, that's better. I could just give the water the sky the sky color by using the skybox sprite as a texture. That would be very interesting indeed. I kind of like the sound of that. I'm thinking about it. Crunch. Yeah, you know what? Let's do that. Let's see. This, the blending color can be C white. Uh, we can draw this with right get texture of uh, SPR skybox self dot skybox type like this uh, I will need to give this its own texture page oh it already is okay um, I will need to make sure that the texture UVs are correct oh you know what these don't have texture coordinates okay that won't work actually that's normal. This this vertex format only takes position normal color. It doesn't take a texture coordinate. Okay, and I don't feel like creating a new vertex format. Never mind. Um, see aqua it is then. Oh well. If I had like a lot of time to mess with this, I would change it. But I want to do as much of this on video and spend as little time messing with things as I can. All right. Let's see. I can say I've implemented the code for. Um, for drawing water, draw the water. Uh, next, I'm going to go and enable the water on the levels that, that have water. You know, if I were to go into the graveyard or one of the other levels where the, um, the ground is dark and, and the sky is dark and that sort of thing, um, if I were to make Unite, toggle water, and then go into F8 for terrain mode, and lower U, yeah, the water is already just darker here because, um, the ground beneath it is darker. If I were to make the graveyard have a lake or something or a pond, then um, it would it would already be be darker than the water at the beach. So that's fine. Um, let's see. Let's just enable this. Save it. This is going to be level seven. Was it? God, I've already forgotten. I I made sure to look at what level number this was when I started. Number seven, the beach. And I've already uh, I've already forgotten. All right, so we're gonna save you as level seven, like that. Fire a quick game, go to level eight, the pirate cove. Ooh, I did not give you a, a sand color, apparently. Um, three, there we go. Give you some sand. Uh, I'd also like to I'd like to do something so that the, the water doesn't just look like look like it ends right there. But we'll, re we'll worry about that later. Uh, anyway, save this as level eight. And I think that's I think that's good for now. Okay, we can close this one. I can can I like archive the level design tab and at least move that off to the side. I can also move the whole things tab off to the side. Um, 
let's see. I will now commit changes to the levels. And I know I've been recording for an hour, but I do want to do want to do some of these other things. Add a release mode macro and or config. Okay. That shouldn't be too bad. Um, on the Raspberry Pi build area isn't displayed correctly. I suspect that's because of the way the application surface is scaled. Um, although I haven't looked into it yet. Spoof multiple collision masks in collision painting mode. That is so that things like poison towers can actually target the track. Uh, setting for particle density uh, and game balance. I will I will definitely do release mode macro like right now. Um, let's see macros. Game maker does have a built-in function GML release mode, but unfortunately this is not something that you really can use when you like build your game. This is to disable certain safety checks such as. Honestly, I don't know what they are right now because I think they have changed over the years. But uh, this will this will remove certain um, certain code from your executable to make it, in theory, slightly faster and slightly smaller. Uh, anyway, I'm gonna make myself a macro release mode. I'm gonna I'm gonna handle this via configs. Actually, am I? That'll be hard because you can't. It's difficult to inherit macros from configs. Yeah. All right, I'll do it. Uh, let me make a release mode called pi release and uh, a config rather and a a config called uh, called regular release. And in release mode, uh, this is going to default to false uh, macro release. That's what it's called, right? Yeah. Release mode can be true. Did I spell that correct? I did. And an pi release. Oh, that's also going to be true. Um, I'm also going to need to... Because again, inheriting from... Inheriting from configs uh, with macros is kind of a pain. Kind of not really something that I think works super great. So I'm going to have to also specify these in pi release. All right. Let's see. What exactly did I want that to entail? I know I wanted that to entail disabling the editor. Um, okay, so let's start with uh, VK tab. Uh, this will only work if we are not in release mode. So if I were to run the game uh, just regularly, I should be able to go into editor mode. Otherwise, uh, if I switch to the release config, we will not be able to do that. So if I were to go to like the pirate curve or whatever, go into go into editor mode, that's fine. That works. Uh, however, if I were to go into release, run the game, and try to hit the tab key, we will not be able to. I wonder how many lines of code are in this project now. I'm gonna check that at the very end. I don't want to check that until the very end. I want to like make my best guess as to how many lines of code are in are in this project, but I don't want to see until I'm actually finished with it. Yeah, tab key doesn't do anything here. Do I hear audio? I do not hear audio. Is there something funny going on with like the audio groups? Hang on, wait. Let me let me deal with this first. First, I'll create the commit the macros and configs. Then the editor is going to be disabled in release mode. Uh, let's see, tools, audio groups. Is there any reason why these should not work on? On certain uh, certain configs, do I just need to clear the cache or something? It 
it's, I see it's rebuilding the shaders and the audio groups and everything because because it's not in cache anymore. All right, now we hear the audio. I guess it was just a cache issue. Okay, better than having to track down some obscure bug with, with uh, with audio configs or something. Uh, next. Let's see. I'd like to freeze the ground vertex buffers uh, and also most of the vertex buffers. Um, vertex and I'm gonna search for this. What is exactly this? This vertex buffer. This is map entities. Okay. Um, this is already frozen. Let's see, can I just get rid of the source control tab because like, can make a source control is bad. Um, this is, this is debug, this is editor stuff anyway, we don't need that. This is the path nodes, don't need that. Uh, ground. If release mode vertex freeze ground. Um, I will not freeze the water vertex buffer just because it's so small. And it really doesn't offer any advantage and actually... It might not offer any disadvantage either, because I think every one of these draws is going to be a batch break, batch break regardless. So I'll, I'll freeze that just because I can. Uh, this is already frozen. This is what is this? This is a very long. Oh, that's S part. Okay, all these are in S part. Okay, don't need to deal with that. So the ground is going to be frozen in release mode. That probably won't make too much of a difference unless someone's like playing this on a really low-end piece of hardware, such as a Raspberry Pi, or perhaps like a really old integrated graphics. Um, if I were to run the game now, we're in release mode, we should still be able to, like obviously we won't be able to edit the terrain anyway or anything like that. So I, if I go into the flower fields, for example, the, the ground is fine, it looks the same. We can't, we can't edit it. All right. So that is another task. Um, extra copies of level data that the editor uses, such as raw frozen vertex buffer data, does not need to be kept if the editor is disabled. Okay, I'm not 100% sure where all of those are because I did not organize this well at all. But let's see, there's some stuff like um, fuse dot. Do I? I could have sworn there was, um, like an editable version of fuse collision data. Oh, it's, it's fuse.raw, okay. Um, see, where is this actually used? Okay, here it is. If uh, not release mode, we can do that. Else, nothing. Uh, if we are in release mode, we won't bother creating fused.raw or assigning to it or anything like that. Uh, this is reading from it. This one down here. This isn't save map anyway. That's not called at all in release mode. Uh, buffer say that's the same thing. Uh, load map. If fuse.raw is not equal to undefined, we're going to delete the fused data. Um, I'm going to separate this into two, two checks. So we're first going to deal with fuse.raw, and then we will deal with uh, fuse.vbuff, which is, this will actually be here in, um, in the actual release mode, because this is actually what you see. Okay. Um, this is loading a map, right? Okay, this is loading a map. I will not include this. Oh, I will. Okay, this is this is the uh, the actual buffer that you load from the disk. If if we are in release mode, we can buffer delete use.raw and and set that to undefined and that should be the end of it that should be at the end of the story um i guess stuff like 
the environment entities. Uh, in the model data, like we can just, if we're in release mode, we can just delete the source, can't we? Or we can fuse this anyway. Yeah. If release mode, um, vertex freeze, because it's not guaranteed that you won't need the individual vertex buffers for the, um, in release mode, because there may be some objects that are just like drawn individually that aren't fused together, but they can still be frozen uh, because we do not need the live versions, the editable versions of those vertex buffers if we're not in, if the editor is disabled. All right, the game should all work. Uh, I'll just I'll just run this. I'll play with the uh, the visuals a bit. If I were to like send something in, put some of those on the screen, uh, build some towers, um, it's still like showing the normals when I when I try and place you. I do not know why that is. I did not expect this to last that long without like losing a bunch of, of lives. Does this show like stats like damage? I don't know it doesn't. Anyway, uh, let us, let us close out of that. Let us run this in the regular, the default config. And let us just like make sure that everything works as intended. Who knows if the audio is gonna gonna have to be uh, cleared from the cache again? Nope, the audio is playing fine. Let's go to level one. Let us just like plop down some random stuff like that, and then F three to fuse, and did not work. Matrix transform. This looks like a different area, unrelated to what I was doing. Hang on. Anyway, uh, everything else was working. Uh, game line 583. That's the database. This is game line 583. Um, incorrect type, expect, undefined, expecting a number. Argument two, this would be one, two. What's N, X, and Y, and Z? Why is that undefined? Oh, I'm still assuming a 36 byte vertex format. I never updated the, uh, the vertex indices, uh, when you fuse map data. Um, Okay, so this is still assuming it's it's a twenty eight byte vertex format now. Uh, the texture coordinates are gone, but for example, CC that should be twenty four. Uh, let me just change all these offsets, and that should take care of it. So we were trying to read from outside the bounds of the buffer. It wasn't crashing for some reason, but instead it was reading out undefined. Would prefer it if it crashed. Um, XX two can be twenty eight, YY two thirty two. All right, that ought to do it. Okay. I would have been surprised if there wasn't something that I forgot there. Uh, I did not want that. Let's just build you off to the side so you're out of the way. Um, F3 to fuse. Okay, that's telling me how many triangles it is and everything else is disappeared. Why is everything else disappeared? Everything else should like still be there. Hang on. Uh, commit this. Surprised I didn't notice that before. Um, I could have... I, I made that change to the vertex format a while ago. I'm surprised I didn't, like, try and edit a, mo uh, edit a map since then. Or I guess I have edited maps, I think, at least. I might not have a, I might not have fused anything in a map. Anyway, why did it disappear again? So, the buff is going to be 
Oh, I should probably, uh, I should probably copy the contents of whatever was already there, shouldn't I? Okay, so there's a few ways to do this. I'm going to... Um, instead of, a uh... Instead of building a vertex buffer, I'm going to do a big old buffer copy. And let's see, I could say if fuse.raw is not equal to undefined, I can buffer copy the contents um, instead of calling this vbuffer, for example, if you, uh, buffer create is fuse data size can be a thousand. Uh, Type can be, actually, size can be one. I'll start off with one. Type can be buffer grow. Uh, alignment can be one. Uh, no need for vertex begin there. If fuse.raw is not equal to undefined, um, buffer copy, clop, buffer copy. Uh, the source buffer will be self.fuse.raw. Uh, source offset zero. Source size can be buffer get size self dot fuse dot raw um, destination buffer fused data destination offset can be zero um, buffer resize uh, to ensure that there's enough space fused data needs to be resized to the size of um, the existing the existing fused data uh, buffer grow will not automatically grow a buffer if you try to buffer copy something into it. So you have to make sure that it's big enough already. Uh, should probably probably buffer seek fused data buffer seek end and an offset of zero to move the uh, the read write head to the end of the buffer, and then. Okay, uh, fused data. We need to just manually write all this data in. And I am I am capable of doing that. I can I can say uh, instead of vertex position 3D, I can say buffer write fused data new position zero. I can I can do this a couple times. Uh, new position uh, index one index two. Uh, this needs a buffer type, doesn't it? This is going to be an F32 buffer F32. Um, if we do this again for normals and then uh, buffer write a different one, buffer u32 for the color, uh, this is going to be something a lot like, oh, it's just going to be cc1, isn't it? Because that's the... That's going to be unmodified. That's just going to be the raw unsigned 32, isn't it? All right, and then we can do this for new position two, the uh, normal two, and CC2 for the color, and uh, new position three, normal three, color three, like that. Okay, and then uh, when all that is said and done, vertex and vbuff. Um, I, I can make var vbuff is going to be equal to buffer create from vertex buffer. Uh, the vertex, now it's the other way around. Um, vertex. Vertex create buffer from buffer. Source buffer is going to be fused data. Uh, the format is going to be, um, it's just format, isn't it? Yeah. Like that. Okay, so this vertex end can go. Uh, DS list clear, the environment entities, that's fine. If fuse.raw is not equal to undefined, uh, buffer delete fuse.raw. Uh, that's fine. If fuse.vbuff is 
um, is not equal to undefined. I guess if it just has a value, who cares? Uh, then buffer delete that. Uh, var v buff is going to equal um, the vertex buffer from the buffer. Show the message how many vertices are in there. Uh, fused dot v buff is going to be that. Um, if we are in release mode, we are going to reverse this. Um, actually, no. If we if we're not in the release mode. Yeah, if we're not in release mode, uh, fuse.raw is just going to be fused underscore data. Uh, otherwise, it would be, you know what? This code is never going to run outside of release mode anyway. This code is never going to run outside of release mode. Okay, not going to worry about that particular check there. This should allow us to to take the contents. Again, if I had properly software engineered this, I could have saved 20 minutes uh, going through that. Let me plop down some, some altar stones. Let me F3 diffuse this. Yes, please. Uh, that is 43,117 triangles and everything is, everything here is, is like, oop. everything here is one solid, solid blob of, of data. Okay. Not going to save that for obvious reasons. That is not part of the level. Um, when fuse, fusing All right. See, so I can I can move the release mode card out into the closed list. Um, actual music. I wish I had gotten that squared away by this point, but I've been I've been majorly slacking talking to talking to the artist friend, the music friend, um, and I I haven't I really need to get back to him on that. Uh, he asked me to send him like reference material for one visuals of the game and two like other samples of game audio that I've that I've got playing in my head, and I've just been majorly slacking on that. Um, what what can I bang out quick? Don't allow a new wave to be sent in for three seconds accounted for speed up button after a wave starts and before a wave ends. Uh, that's mostly because sometimes I, one, sometimes I accidentally double click on the next wave button. And two, sometimes I, I send in a wave at like the exact same time that a wave is set to start on its own. And that effectively causes two waves to be sent in at once, which is not the desired outcome. So I do want to build in a tolerance um, like a, a three second delay between when waves can come in. Um, if you, I'm thinking if you start a wave and I don't remember if it's already like this, but if you start a wave manually, uh, the countdown timer resets to, to 30 seconds, right? To the countdown. So if I were to send in, all right, there's, let's say 10 seconds to the next wave. If I were to do that, okay, that does reset it. Okay. Uh, so then the concern is just, Um, where's the room where, like, seriously, where, where did I put the room? Oh, RM underscore test. There we go. Uh, where is the... Where's the gameplay UI? Just this is just in like the regular the regular overlay. No, that's the, the tower selection UI. Uh, game overlay. There we go. So this this button here, this next button thing. Um, if I say update, it's uh, it's update, right? If I were to edit object and look at yeah, okay. So it's the update method. Um, I can enable or disable, I guess I'll just open the, open the object again. I can just enable or dis it. And it's not working after I closed it the first time. That's a bug. Uh, I can just enable or disable, uh, let's go to the parent. Any, any given button, right? No? Thought I could. Oh yeah. 
Okay, so it's enabled. So I'll just I'll just toss in a check that says in game, if what is it like send and wave? Um, if game that wave countdown. is less than, uh, what did I decide it would be? I'll call it like wave countdown threshold and make that three. Um, if this is less than wave countdown threshold, uh, self.enabled is going to be false, else self.enabled is going to be true. Uh, of course, you can always contract this, self.enabled is going to equal uh, wave countdown is greater than or equal to the threshold, and that is going to be much less code, so I'm going to go with that. Um, let's see. There's no hotkey, right, for this? So if I, were to, if I were to wait until the countdown comes down to about two-ish, this is going to gray out. And I'll, I'll let it play at normal speed. All right, yeah, the button grays out when we're, when we're close to another one, and then, and then it's good. All right, so... All right, that works. Uh, I'll also toss, just in case there's any, like, automated process to send in a wave early, like if you hit a key or something like that. Um, if uh, the wave countdown is less than the countdown threshold, I'm just going to say return. I have one too many parentheses there. Uh, that way, if there's if I decide to add later like a, a hotkey to send in a wave early, it won't, it just won't do it if, if it's too close to the next wave coming in on its own. Okay. All right. So, let me move this uh, to the close list. I have finished off a bunch of a bunch of task cards. Uh, there's a couple remaining that are going to be trickier. Uh, there's a couple that may involve a little bit more time. I'm definitely, obviously, going to need to wait for a. For my my audio friends to to do the music, and I'm really gonna have to get my button gear and like getting him his his reference material so that he can actually do that. Um, the Raspberry Pi that's gonna be a, a bit of bug fixing. I'm probably gonna have to do a bunch of ch testing on the Raspberry Pi to figure out what's going on there. Uh, spoofing collision masks so that you can paint the actual track on the um, on the collision surface. That's not gonna be difficult, but it may take a bit of time. Setting for particle density shouldn't be difficult. May take a little bit of time. Balance shouldn't be difficult, may take a little time. Um, so I'm going to end things off here. I'm going to make this, what are we up to, 0 0.59? Um, 0 0.59. Uh, I, will, I will record the next level design video, and I will have that up for next week. Um, I'm probably honestly just going to just not commentate that one and make that one just a speed up session. I might, I'm, I'll probably just like record that late at night one day and then just be done with it. Uh, like I said, I, I've made some adequately adequate uh, house-shaped models and a castle-shaped model in, a, in Asset Forge, and I'll just I'll just plop those into into the game, and I'll just spend some time uh, making the last three levels. Uh, after that, uh, there's not really much left to do. I'd like to um, I'd like to get the rest of the bug fixes in. Uh, the end of game development does tend to involve a lot of that help. Um, I'd like to include some persistent save load so that if you clear a level, you, the game knows that the next time you uh, you open it. And also so that um, I would like progression so that you have to actually beat the levels in order. And so that you um, you can't play level 9 before you before you clear level 8. Uh, obviously, there's balance. I still need to do balance. I Not my favorite part of game dev, but again, that's something that you tend to have to do. And I think probably... Yeah, definitely by the end of the year. Definitely by the end of the year. Uh, maybe even a little before that. I should have a... I should be done with this. I should have um, a playable on, on itch.io or something like that. And then after that, I'm going to take a break from Let's Make a Game, and then I will, I will do another one uh, later, although probably not immediately. 
So, my name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games. I hope you all found this interesting. If you want the code for this, look for the GitHub repository down in the video description. I should probably push this and, uh, and make my, my weekly release. Um, let's take the 0 0.59 tag week 59 is the pre-release. Uh, links down in the video description. I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute towards these videos being made, uh, there will be links to that in all the usual places. You can see some fun things, see your name in the credits, uh, hear yourself shouted out at the end, see a preview of my future plans. Uh, so the next time I do a Let's Make a Game, I will uh, announce announce plans for that there um, while they're still in progress so you can see how they, how they take shape. Otherwise, I hope you all enjoyed that, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Edward Holt, Emily Coyo, Gunnar Clovis, Posho, Tusk, and Zenjamin for supporting these videos. If you want to see your name in the credits or hear yourself shouted out at the end, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.